Hello and welcome to my podcast. I am Salil of Salil Inner Voice and thank you for joining me today. This is the third and final podcast on the subject of root cause therapy. If you joined me on the other two, thank you so much. And as always, I do a little bit of housekeeping at the start. So some of the topics that I may cover in this podcast may cause triggers within yourself or may make you uncomfortable. I will be talking about mental health and I will be talking about trauma and traumas of the past. So if you're not comfortable in listening to this, please stop now. And as always, whatever I say or whatever um, advice I may give in any of my podcasts, this does not take the place of your own individual therapy session with a qualified medical practitioner. So after that, we will now start. So in this episode, we will be addressing the bigger picture of root cause healing. We now know that a root cause does not have to be just one thing. The initial incident or ground zero creates a ripple effect that triggers our survival response. And I discussed the survival response in the previous podcast, which is a fight flight or freeze response by identifying your own personal survival response will give you an insight into where your triggers lie. We also have to negotiate the effects of those around us and how it ultimately transforms our lives. So without sounding like I'm repeating myself, but actually I am because it's so important, we have to peel back all of these layers see with clear vision just what is the truth, do some serious inner assessments of our own triggers and then accept that this is the new you. This is how it is. The emotional effects of this can be huge but this is where the true healing actually begins. This is stage two, the healing. Physically, our body is healing itself pretty much all of the time, but our mind or mental health is a barrier to just how much healing takes place and is it the full healing or a half done job? Sometimes we have to accept that the life we had is no longer accessible to us and we are now presented with a fresh start. Of course, it may not be quite as we planned, But it is what it is and the future is now a whole new canvas for you to create on. Now we all have a safe zone and this safe zone can sometimes become our prison. Once we have been through some form of trauma, once we have passed through the many layers upon layers that has been built upon us, we are then finding ourselves existing in a bubble. We are existing in this safe zone and this safe zone can become our own self-imposed prison. It's therefore so important that we actually tentatively take a first step out of this safe zone. Now around every safe zone is a grey zone and this grey zone is where we make our first steps that baby learning to walk along the furniture and then sees a gap between one chair and another it has to look between that little gap and reach the other chair that's our grey zone that is where we actually step and where we have to learn that this actually is okay once we accept this grey zone we then take a step outside of that one and get used to this and each step outside each of these wider boundaries our safe zone becomes that one step brings more confidence that extra step that little bit further that pushing the boundaries starts to create our new life it takes one step to actually begin the journey As you are now taking your first tentative steps along your healing journey, you must now battle yourself, your mental aspect, because it is so important now to keep a positive mindset, positive mental attitude. 
because our own mind becomes our own enemy sometimes. Why are you doing this? What is the point? Who's going to want you in this situation? Who's going to support you now? What good are you? What use are you? All these are awful negative thoughts, but I'm sure you've had them. We've all had them. That horrible little demon that sits on our shoulder that literally wants to keep you in your safe zone, your own self-imposed prison. Because what's the point? Well, the point is life is for living. As long as you're taking a breath, you're alive. As long as you're alive, there is some purpose, there is some quality of life, there is some path that you still have to take, a job you still need to do. So this is why it's so important that you think of me on your own other shoulders, sorry, you think of me on your shoulder battling your mental demons, saying to you, hey, keep going. There is a purpose. There is a positive step outside of this. There is a future. Keep going. Keep going. Now, as I said in the earlier podcasts, you can also push that little bit too hard, too fast. So balance is the key. Pacing yourself is the key. Taking your time, but still keep moving forward. You need to build on your strength. You need to think just what you can do. Not Don't focus on what you can't do or what you could do. It's what you can do now. If you've had, let's take back our example again, this back injury. If before you were a very active sporty person, okay, that's what you could do. So what can you do now? Can you stand up? Can you walk? Can you weight bear their strength? So each one of those actions can be built upon. We don't need to dwell on what yesterday had for you. We don't need to focus too hard on what you want to do tomorrow. It's what you can do today. So today you can stand up. Today you can walk across the room. It may give you a little pain in your bike, but hey, you can do it. So it's working on what you can and what control have you got around your room. Can you walk from room to room to get yourself something to eat? If you can, great. If you need to ask somebody for help at this moment, that's fine. But let's say they put it on a table a little bit away from you. So you have to walk to that table instead of sitting where you were and having the food brought to you. It's making that little bit more of an effort to gain control, to gain independence, to gain more self-esteem, to gain a positive mental attitude. And this is so, so imperative to a full healing to take place. It's so important that you look forwards, not backwards. You build on your strengths, don't focus on your weakness. Now what I always say to any of my clients, the first thing you need to do, and I know this is actually quite hard, but the first thing you need to do every morning when you look at yourself in the mirror, no matter how much of a bad night you've had, no matter how bad your hair looks, is you smile. Smile at yourself in the morning and that creates a positive mental attitude, even if it's a fake smile just smile because a smile affects the mind. A smile affects how you feel about yourself. If you scowl, then your shoulders automatically hunch down and you start going into a mental negative decline. If you smile, you'll suddenly find yourself standing tall and lifting your head up. This may be smiling at yourself, but it works. Please try it. It's great. So focusing on the bigger picture, focusing on your strengths, focusing on a positive mental attitude, focusing on creating them steps, them little movements outside of your safe zone will start giving you control back of your life. Don't start creating dangers where there aren't any. Don't start thinking of irrational fears. That's just another way of your survival responses trying to protect you. 
it's important that you master your thoughts and make them work for you, not against you. So on that note, thank you so much for joining me. So keep smiling, keep your head up high, keep pushing those boundaries a little bit, keep a positive mental attitude and I hope I see you or speak to you again in my future podcasts. If you would like any information about my other services or contact me in any way, please check out my website www.salilhealing.co.uk or you can find me on YouTube, Instagram or Facebook under Salil Inner Voice. Thank you.